Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Pocus Cases. In this episode, we're going to talk about one of the most common fractures we see in the emergency department, the distal radius fracture. In this case, we have a 60-year-old female who's riding her bike, notice the lack of helmet going on, and when she's going across oncoming traffic, she falls off her bike and lands on her wrist. She has a foosh and there's a deformity and she shows up to her local emergency department. Can we use POCUS in order to determine if someone has a distal radius fracture? Well, if you look at this article where they evaluated the effectiveness of bedside point of care ultrasound in the diagnosis and management of distal radius fractures, they showed that emergency physicians can both identify the type of fracture and the treatment needed. In order to do this, we're going to start with our linear probe. We're going to place the probe on the patient's arm, and we're going to place it in the longitudinal plane where the marker is going to be parallel to the bone. The first step is to slide side to side to find out exactly where the bone is. The image that you want to generate is where you have the bone as this bright white line across the screen in the longitudinal plane. Now I know what some of you are saying. How do I know if this is my bone or if this white line represents my bone or if this white line represents my bone? Because all three lines are white and go across the screen. Well, one of the tricks that you can do to find out which one of those lines represents your bone is by rotating your probe into the short axis. The short axis will get you a bone shadow far field to where your white bone is. And then as you rotate the probe into the long axis, you can now see that this white line at the very top of the screen is the one that represents our distal radius. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to slide the probe towards the patient's wrist. And when we do that, you're going to follow this white line until you get to this area here, which is our wrist joint. Here is what we found when we did our patient from the case's distal radius. We see a white bone down here and then a discontinuation of it. And then as you see in the near field, there's this piece way up here. Also notice this black right here. This represents a hematoma, and this part of the bone is actually supposed to be attached right here to this part of the bone. This is what the patient's corresponding x-ray look like. Now let's go through that in a little bit more detail. When we place the probe on the patient's wrist, you're seeing the long distal radius shaft, and then this bone here, which is the deformity of the distal radius, is actually more dorsal than it should be. And that's representing this long bone here, which is this long bone here. And then in the near field, this structure here, which represents this piece right here. It's causing a shadow behind it here. And here is the shadow. So this piece here corresponds to this piece here. And this piece here corresponds to this piece here. Ideally, what we want to do is put this piece here back to this part here in a reduction. During the reduction attempt, the doctor who was doing the reduction thought that he had an adequate reduction based on his tactile feel of the patient as the deformity was much improved. When we place the ultrasound probe back on the patient, however, we notice that the long bone still had a little bit of a gap before reaching our actual distal fragment piece. When you look at the initial ultrasound from that x-ray I just showed you, and after the first attempt at reduction, you can see that the gap is more minimalized now, but still not quite right. So before we actually put the cast on the patient, a second reduction attempt was attempted. And check out this article. This article showed that when you're using ultrasound to assist in your distal radius fracture reductions, that in about 40% of the cases, 
you're going to have another reduction attempt after you've done your additional one. And POCUS guided reductions enhance certainty regarding reduction adequacy when the clinical assessment is unclear. On our second reduction attempt, which you'll notice, is now the distal fragment piece is more in line with the piece. There's only a minimal gap now where the distal fragment piece attaches to the shaft of the radius. So here is that first POCUS image we had before we did the x-ray. And this was the second reduction attempt, which shows only a minimal gap now between the shaft and the distal fragment. This is much better reduction. We can now go ahead and put the cast on. Once we put the cast on and molded it in place and shot another x-ray, you can see that the reduction is adequate now. As always with ultrasound, you need to know its limitation. And the one thing that I'm just going to caution you about for distal radius fractures is you always want to look in more than one plane. In this screencast so far, I've only showed you one plane of looking at fractures. You want to look at it in one plane as well as in a second plane. Just like when you send someone for an x-ray, you don't just get one x-ray of the bone. You usually get two or three views in order to determine if something's fractured or if the reduction is adequate. The same with POCUS. You want to look in more than one plane to look to see the adequacy of the reduction and also to assess for any fractures. A second thing that I would like to caution you about is what some of my colleagues have approached me about in the past when they've asked, why is it that I'm doing x-rays on my patients when I'm doing a point of care ultrasound? And this has everything to do with communication. As of 2018, if I wanna communicate something to my orthopedic surgeon when I send them to their fracture clinic and follow-up, the way I do this is through an x-ray. I get an x-ray prior to my reduction to show them what the bones look like. I get an x-ray after my reductions to show them what the bone looks like. I'm using a point of care ultrasound in order to make a point of care decision. Do I need to do a further reduction? Is my reduction that I've done adequate? These are the questions I can answer with my point of care ultrasound. But my orthopedic surgeon is going to require x-rays as that is how they assess adequacy of bone reduction. The hope, however, is that by using point of care ultrasound, hopefully I am minimizing the number of times I'm going to have to re-x-ray them. Here's a summary of what we've seen so far. Number one, if you are having trouble finding the echogenic bone in long, start in short and rotate into long to find out which one of those echogenic lines is your bone. Number two, after reducing a fracture, place the POCUS probe back on the patient's arm post-reduction before you put your cast on to ensure that you have an adequate reduction. Finally, remember to confirm your reduction at least two planes. You want to ensure that you're seeing more than one plane, just like when you send someone for an x-ray, you're going to get more than one plane of view. And as always, if there's any questions, you can always email me at pocuscases at gmail.com.